right guys I'm just getting out all the relevant equipment here so I'm sorted out Uh, guys, as I said to you, I'm just going to do a demo now on what's here. For these cubicles so that you know what's going on, this motor and uh, control gear is not part of this installation. It's there for the plumbers. So that's got nothing to do with your test on these four single phase panels. I'll talk to you a little later about the three phase panels over there. So I'll leave that for now. Obviously the hot water service here is part of this installation. We've got socket outlets, two light circuits, uh, there's uh, like an extraction fan here, there's our range plug there, and a 15 amp one there as well. Main earth, uh, water pump coming in, and they've got all the bonding together from the hot water service, okay? Uh, now, I'm not going to do live uh, dead testing now. That's not part of this, okay? Uh, so let's assume that we've done our dead testing and let's assume that we've done a visual inspection, okay? So this is just the electrical testing part of it. And how do I know it's dead? Because there's my consumer's mains, okay? If I just get myself organized here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just start from the very beginning again with what we started discussing upstairs. The first thing I'm going to do is MEN, MEN point. So I'll just lift one end of that out. Okay, disconnected, and guys, if I just, as I said, go right from the very beginning here, and we'll go through the meter setup. So I'm selecting the correct meter here, a low reading ohm meter. What's the first thing I need to do? Right, battery test. And guys, the meter should be flat when you do this uh, to get the best accuracy. So there, and I'm, the meter is on. Okay. It's in the good, so that's fine. I'll just show you there. Uh, so I'm now going to select the correct range, the lowest range I've got. Now, I'll just go through this process with you. Uh, obviously, I'm looking on the top green scale there. When I uh, turn the meter on, and my leads are obviously open here, it should go over to a high resistance. Three ohms is this side. The zero is there, of course, for those people who forget. When I put these leads together, that needle should move over towards zero. And now, as I said, I should be having the meter flat and I use this knob here to zero it, not the screw, okay? Some people try and get a screwdriver and set that, that's incorrect. So I'm just setting it with the mirror and you remember your angle of parallax business and all of that. So we need one image there. Once I've got it set on zero, I'm just going to put it across a one ohm resistor and I should get pretty close to one ohm. It might not be exact because the resistor in here has got a tolerance, remember. Okay, so don't panic if it's not dead on one ohm. You're just checking its calibration. Okay. Right, so the meter is set up. Now, the first thing I would normally do is the main earth. So I need to find that main earth wire. Uh, I'm hoping it's the first wire here. Let's 
screws around it off. Now guys, where must I put my probes now? When I'm testing the main earth? On the electrode. So I'm just going to clip this onto the electrode there. And I think I've got the right wire there. Yes, I have. And I should have it flat. I'm getting a reading of, I would be saying, less than 0.05 ohms. Okay, because it's between the first and the second uh, mark on the meter that we discussed. Okay. So that's that one. I have pulled out the piece of wire. Why? To eliminate the parallel paths. Okay. So that's that done. Uh, guys, as I said, I will be taking some shortcuts here because of time constraints. Obviously, I should be doing the water pipe and gas pipe in the same way. Uh, perhaps I'll just do one more here for you. I need to check the board. I'm just going onto the MEN link, and I should check that the board is earthed. And that should also be less than 0.5, which it is. Okay? Okay? Right. Another one that I normally do just to show people how to do it, because some guys forget, I think. I'm going to do a socket outlet for you. I'll just do this one there. What do I need to know to test that socket outlet? I need four things to match up with table A2, right? I need to know active size, earth size, the overload value of the breaker, and the type. So how, how am I going to check which breaker? Yeah, you just bell it out, okay? Now, I'm using this meter only to bell it out. I'm not doing the test with this meter, okay? So I've got the switch on. I'm going to just put this on beep. Uh, I don't know which breaker it is. I'll... Okay, it's the first circuit. Just to double check, I'm just going down the line here just to make sure. It's that first breaker, guys. So I've identified the breaker now. I'm looking at the breaker. It says C16. I'm also checking the size of the wire coming out the bottom of it. And I can see the cable there. There's the earth. So I've got 2.5 and 2.5, active and earth. And I've got 16 amp with type C. So I'm going to go to table 8.2. And I'm going to say 16 amp, 2.5, 2.5, type C. And if I'm doing, I'll do this as a trailing lead test. I'll do an, another test with a loop. Uh, 0.61 ohms. Everybody happy with that? So now I've checked that out. Uh, would I have to pull a, an earth wire out of the bar in this case? Wooden wall, plastic socket outlet? I would be saying no. But as we said, if you're not sure, just pull it out the bar. I'm saving a bit of time. Um, I won't do that now, okay? So I'm clipping it onto the MEN link, and I'm going to go onto the earth, and I would be saying less than 0.01 ohms, okay? So that's that. Should I check the other side of the socket outlet? Yes, if it's a double socket out, I need to do both. And if these were all on one circuit, I would have to check each one. Okay, we discussed that already. Okay, all lights as well. Uh, I will do that now. So guys, that's the socket outlet and how to bell it out. Another circuit I wanted to do for you is this this range plug. So we've got the plug so that it's easier to test with and a cable. Guys, uh, again, if I just check out this circuit, it'll be one of these two breakers down the end here. I'm assuming it's the 20. Yes. Okay, and there is a functional switch on that circuit. So guys, I've got a 20 amp, this actually looks like uh, 4 mil coming out of here. And I can see a 2.5 earth. 
So really speaking, I should be doing a calculation on this one because the 20 amp in the books is 2.5, 2.5. I cannot uh, realistically use that figure on table 8.2. Are we all happy with that? So just for the demonstration purposes, I'm going to do the test uh, as a loop test because now I don't need to get the four things correct. Okay? I can use the RPHE value. I don't need the sizes. So I've got 20 amp, type C, and I've got a figure of 0.98. So that saves me doing the calculation. Okay? If it's on the table, you can use it. Otherwise, you'd have to calculate. So I've got a figure of 0.98. Uh, I need to have... a little bridge wire and I'm just pulling that active out so I can get to it and I'm not going to worry about parallel paths because again I'm on an insulated wall if you were worried pull the earth out okay so I've got my value, my meter still set up. I can now go across earth and active and I'm getting a reading of I'd be saying less than 0.45 or let's call it 0.4 ohms. So that's within the 0.98. Okay guys? So and that's as a loop test. So I'm measuring on, on the active and back on the earth. Okay? So it just saves you perhaps doing a calculation. Okay, so that's a loop test. Uh, there's just one more that I was going to do for you because of the parallel paths business. Guys, the hot water service is my typical example with parallel paths because we've got the metal pipes here going into the ground and it's looped around to there and also the, the main earth through the ground. I'll just put these cables back. Right, guys, so to find this circuit and check it out, just to ballot out with this meter, I'm going to, I'm assuming it's the 16 ampere, but I need to make sure. Okay, so it's a 16 amp, it's got 2.5 on it. I'm just looking for the cable here. And it's got a 2.5 earth. So 16, 16, 2.5, it's the same value we had earlier. I'll do this as a trailing lead test, so it's 0.61. Okay. What are you what are we going to do here now, guys? You tell me if this is correct. What's wrong? I must disconnect the earth. Now, to me, in this particular case, the easiest thing to do is for me to take that off and just check onto there. And uh, I'd be saying about 0.05 ohms there. Okay? So, guys, we, we will have to disconnect something there because we've got the parallel paths. Okay? So, I have taken some shortcuts. Uh, again, guys, we need to, we're supposed to check everything. But I've just tried to do one of each thing, okay? I think that pretty much covers the resistance testing. Okay, so we have to do all of them, or just do one and then tell you what we have to do, right? 
we would usually we would say to you, right, do this circuit, do that circuit, do this circuit. So we'll target certain things, and and this might be one of the targets, and we check so in to see. Of the range of yeah. Uh, usually those would be two favourite circuits to to target, to see if you do that as a loop test, and if you take care of the parallel paths there. Okay. Right, guys. Obviously, the next thing is the uh, insulation test that I would do next. The order doesn't actually matter, though. Okay as long as you do the tests. So let's go through the meter setup. Uh, number one, I'm going to do a battery test again initially. Okay, so battery is good. I'm now going to, the next thing is to select the correct range. So I'm selecting the 500 volt range, it says in the book. And guys, the unofficial part of this test to me is that I want to turn that on, and with the leads open there, where should the needle be? We're on the top, ready, pink scale there. Infinity or maximum resistance is down that end. Zero is down this end. So the needle should be over here. When I short this out, I want to see that needle move over to the zero. Okay. Now, obviously, we need to be careful because we've got voltage here. So guys, that's just an initial test. In the old days, that's all they did. But now we have to go a bit further with it. So it says in the book that we need to check the voltage that the meter is pushing out. It's a DC value. So I put, don't, a common mistake in the test is the guys go and put this on AC voltage and they wonder what's going on. So I'm putting it on DC. And obviously I'm putting it across the 1 meg resistor. Uh, and we're getting very close to one meg and 500 odd volts. So that's within the 450, 600. Okay? Right. So uh, I'm happy with my meter. Uh, meter set up. Now, what do I have to do to prepare my installation for this test? Okay, let's assume that I've installed the consumer's mains. I know it's not a, the best of consumer's mains for this situation, but I'm going to turn on my main breaker to test that. I'm going to turn on all my circuits. MEN must be out. And I'm just going to put a bridge across an active somewhere where I can get to it. So I'm just getting to one of these little bridge pieces. And I'm going to go onto my main neutral bar. So that bridges everything else out. I need to make sure that all my earths are connected. So I'm just checking. And I'm just going to put all my switches on. Okay, so everything's on, and now I can do the test. Uh, I've gone onto the earth bar there just to check. Zero, and if I go onto the neutral bar, that's okay. Okay. Now, what do I need to do? Two-way switching. So I'm just going to flick one. Go back there again. Still okay. I'll flick another one. Still okay. Now, I don't know whether it's that switch or this one. So I'm going to flick that one as well. Still okay. And just in case you're not happy, we'll flick that back again. And we're still clear. Okay? So it's well over one meg. If I just get a reading on it, I'm going to be saying greater than 200 mega ohms. Rather not write infinity down on your paper. Okay? Greater than 200 mega ohms. Or whatever the reading is. Uh, guys, so we've operated our two-way light circuit. I'll just go over this again. 
if I got a reading that was lower than one meg, what would we expect that's possibly causing us a problem? Right, hot water. What are we going to do about it? We're going to disconnect it. Where? At the hot water. Because the cable going to the hot water needs to be tested at one, or needs to be greater than one mega ohm. It's only the element that's allowed to be, what was the value? 0.01 mega ohms, okay? So it's only that element on its own. The cables are a separate issue. And they need to be one mega or greater. So you need to tell us that we disconnect in the correct place at the hot water. And I think that pretty much does the uh, insulation test, guys. Uh, I don't think I've left anything out there. So I think we're pretty much done with that meter. The next one is that we need to have a look at is the polarity test. I'll just do the same socket outlet that we looked at earlier. And while I remember, I'll say this to you. We need to do a polarity test on all circuits, including lights. And I know it's a, a bit of a tricky situation getting into these light fittings, but we are supposed to do them. Okay? Even something like a hot water service, guys. And you're going to say, oh, but I can't operate the switch there. The switch being the thermostat. Well, that could be part of your visual inspection. you still got to check it, don't we? Okay? So if I'm checking that socket outlet there, earlier we found that that breaker was the one that fed that circuit. So it's fed off that RCD. I am therefore going to clip my neutral onto the first protected bar. And I would just, I'll just switch all these circuits off again. I'm going to put just that one on and go onto the active connection on the top and my MEN link. So MEN link, the active going through that breaker, and the correct neutral bar is the way we should really do it, okay? And then I go to the point that I'm testing, and it doesn't matter what order we do this in, guys. We need to get 15 ohms, or very close to it, across active neutral. I need to operate the switch to make sure that the switch is working in the active. Now at this stage I cannot say that it's definitely in the active. So I'm going to go to earth uh, active and I sh should get 10 ohms and obviously it should open up. That confirms that the switch is in the active. And as a triple check on the switch I also need to go there and I should get 5 ohms and still get the same 5 ohms because the switch should not be in the earth or the neutral. Okay? So, guys, we should check every outlet and every light, etc., with that process. Uh, as I've said to you upstairs, guys, what are we checking for when we do the polarity test? We, we're checking that the wires are all going to the right place. Okay, so. polarity test. We're checking that the neutral's going to the right place, active switched, and yeah, we would pick up shorts in the cable by getting our 5, 10, and 15 that we did not check earlier with the insulation test, and if there's opens in the circuit, okay? Uh, so guys, that pretty much does it. I've only done one point, though. We should be doing all of them. Uh, next test, circuit interconnections. Guys, I'll just start with a demo on a neutral. And I'll just start down this end. It doesn't matter where we start. If I, was, if I wanted to check that particular circuit, I'm going to just use my digital meter. We don't need to have, we're not trying to measure very small values. So the digital meter is fine. And I'd be probably just putting it on the bell test now. Uh, guys, you take out each neutral in turn. So I've taken out the first one. I'm checking between there and that bar. My RCDs are off. So I'm going to go to each bar or 
you could turn the RCDs on and just go on to one bar. I think that's okay. Uh, obviously, we want to get an open circuit there. We don't want to get a reading at all. Okay? High resistance. I would then be putting that neutral back and pulling the next one out. And I just go right through all the neutrals like that. Okay? So I'll just put that one back. Now, obviously, I do the same thing with the Earths, and I'll just go back. Should any of those neutrals bell out? No. I shouldn't have any of them belling out. Uh, with the Earths, I won't, I'll take a bit of a shortcut here. I'm going to pull, I should be pulling one Earth out, and I check between that Earth and the bar, and I should be getting an open circuit again, right through all the Earths. Should any of them bell out? Yeah. There may be some like the hot water. If I had pulled out the earth, the protective earth conductor, I should be bailing out against the bonding conductor. Okay? So if, where you've got a situation with bonding, yes, you will get a bell out. You should be then checking that is correct that it does that. Okay? So guys, that's the earths and the neutrals. What we spoke about upstairs with the actives, I'll just do that demo. Uh, we need to check every active. And if I had wired up this board, I need to check the internal wiring as well. Okay, so I've got all my breakers off. I would just be starting at one end of the bar, and it doesn't matter whether it's the top or the bottom. So I'm just starting at the top, and I'm going to that active, to these, that's shorted out with that, that one, and I just keep going through all the actives and the bottom because then I'm checking every active outgoing and internal wiring okay then I go to the next active terminal and I just keep going like that now we've got a, a short there and that can happen guys what it is it's the feed out the bottom of this breaker to the RCD and to, in that case, it's the range. Okay, so that should be belling out. And you can always check it by just following the wires in your board. Okay, that shouldn't be... So with the actives, you would find that some of them will bell out. I'm going to get one there. That's the feed from there to the top of the RCD. Okay? And so, guys, you just keep going like that all the way around. Do, it's just safer to do top and bottom. Unless you've just installed one circuit, then it's a bit of a different story. But to check the whole board, that's it. Uh, guys, so that does circuit into connections. Uh, I think we have spoken about RCDs, okay? Uh, we're, if we do have power, we're going to either do a, op operate it by pu pushing the test button, or we have the special tester, if power is available. If no power available, we're going to mark it on the COC, let the customer know. Okay? Uh, the other thing I mentioned was that if we did have power and we had three circuits coming off an RCD, which circuit do we have to test with the special tester? All of them, it says. Okay? The book says all of them. So guys, we would not be powering up these boards for these tests. Uh, because we'd have to check them ourselves before we did that. Uh, we don't know what the guys have done prior to you being here, etc. So we won't be doing that. We'll just be giving you verbal questions on RCDs, okay? Uh, the other one was the loop test, which we have already done, okay, on that. Remember, uh, loop tests are done on what circuits have to be loop tested? Socket outlets that are not on an RCD have to be loop tested but you can do any circuit okay guys right I think that's about it okay Barry